of the specific features of the model, only a high load on the cooling system and an increased chance of its breakdown can be noted. With a relatively large engine compartment, radiator airflow is sacrificed to aerodynamics. And even in simple versions, the design of the cooling system is quite complicated. There is an additional circuit of the automatic transmission cooling system tied to the radiator and circulating with the help of an electric pump and an adjustable pump capacity with a pneumatic drive and an electrician serving it on gasoline engines and a combined pump with a built-in electric pump and clutch on diesel engines. And for gasoline engines, the thermostat itself is double circuit, expensive, complex, and with a small resource. And the expansion tank is rather weak. Cracks on machines over the age of five years are found regularly. I will note one more feature of this Mercedes. Although the engine compartment is large, the engine layout is quite dense so that almost all operations are associated with the removal of many interfering systems. Mostly in Russia, the car is presented with engines of the M270 series and a structurally related AMG M113 engine. This is a family of four-cylinder units with a displacement of 1.6 and 2.0 liters with a capacity of 102, 122, and 156 horsepower for 1.6 liter engines and 184, 211, and 218 horsepower for 2 liter blocks of models A160, A180, A200, A224 Matic, A250, and A250 Sport, respectively. The cylinder block of the engines is aluminum, the liners are cast iron, the timing chain drive with phase regulators, direct injection, and, of course, there is turbocharging. Look familiar? That's right, this is a variant of the M274 series motor, but for a transverse layout. They have the same blocks and similar cylinder heads, although attachments, manifolds, and some other elements are different. You can read about the operating experience of the M274 in the reviews of the Mercedes W212 or W204. In general, this is a fairly successful motor with a good resource, and it is much more reliable than its predecessor, the M271. But there are still enough nuances in the design. This motor is surprisingly complex for its size and power. The cooling system is regulated with a controlled pump, a thermostat, with a two-layer cylinder head cooling circuit and a separate circuit for the cylinder block. The timing has not only phase regulators with a very wide operating range, but also a Camtronic valve lift system, which reduces pumping losses at low load and forced idling. The injection is highly accurate with very fast piezo injectors, and the injection operation algorithms are extremely complex. Ignition features a very high spark plug energy for normal operation at a fairly lean mixture and at high boost pressure. In general, this is an expensive motor, and it's a miracle that it turned out to be quite reliable. In fact, the main problem that almost every owner faces is replacing the thermostat. Even on cars, after restyling, it wedges, although officially the part has long been replaced with an improved one. Fortunately, in 90% of cases, it will stick in the open position, and this is safe for the engine. For example, the oil filler tube is often broken, it is corrugated plastic, and the removal of the intake manifold usually leads to the need to replace an expensive set of gaskets. In general, the trouble is not so small, although not ruinous. Gasoline leaks due to a leaky rubber tube on the injection pump are also an extremely common problem since the tube changes elementarily. If it smells of gasoline, then see if the hose that goes from the injection pump towards the engine shield is wet. When revving, the belts often whistle. Sometimes this is due to the wear of the tension roller, in this case, the belt warps a little. The increased load on the generator also affects when the start-stop system is operating in dead traffic jams. The ignition system requires regular monitoring of the condition of the coils and spark plugs. And it's better to take candles in a trusted place, buying a French MGK instead of a Japanese one, and even more so, just fake candles will lead to the failure of expensive coils, and even to scuffing due to the electrodes burning off and getting into the piston group and under the valves. In the pressurization system, the weak point is the wastegate valve, the stem of which moves in the old-fashioned way with a pneumatic actuator, but is prone to wedging. The IHI turbines themselves are very reliable, and cases of their failure are rare. 
Unfortunately, the motor was not created for our conditions at all. It is extremely sensitive to the quality of gasoline, oil, and the regularity of maintenance. Frequent refueling with gasoline without detergent additives is guaranteed to damage expensive injectors. Failures of the VKG system and simply old or bad oil heavily contaminate the intake valves and piston group with carbon deposits. All this leads to regular detonation and loss of power. But the check engine light won't come on until the last minute, until the pistons crack and pieces start flying off of them. And when the turbine is damaged and compression is lost, then an error will appear. Therefore, owners are usually delighted with the engines of this series, but the services are somewhat less optimistic, because often the joyful owner comes to them for major repairs. Remember, the motor is extremely complex and parts for it are very expensive. The timing is quite reliable, and the chains on the M270 can go up to 200,000 miles. But it is necessary under the condition of monitoring the operation of the tensioner, which is prone to slips. If the chain roars when starting the engine, then you need to check the tensioner and change if necessary. Phase regulators are quite expensive, and their resource may be less than the resource of the rest of the timing. And also for motors until 2014, the drive discs on the shafts are poorly planted, which is why the phases leave. In case of errors, it makes sense to check the correspondence of the phases of the shafts to their actual position. The discs are welded, in this case the replacement of the shafts is not necessary. What conclusions follow from this? Just smooth engine operation does not guarantee that there will be no need for expensive repairs in the near future. A compression test and endoscope inspection are mandatory, even though cast iron liners are not prone to scuffing. But this is the only way to detect piston cracks. Usually, rubbing of the cylinder wall and loss of compression, combined with copious carbon deposits, directly indicate that the engine is not durable. When inspecting a car, careful monitoring with a proprietary scanner is required, not only for errors, but also for engine operating parameters. If you use a selection service, then the specialist must know the features of a specific line of engines and gearboxes, by the way. For mileages over 120,000 kilometers, careful monitoring of the condition of the timing belt is necessary, checking for phase discrepancies, the condition of valves, clutches, and drive discs. The M133 engines in the A45 AMG are very similar to the 2-liter M270, but differ in a reinforced cylinder block, cylinder head, piston, turbine, intake manifold, and spray-on rather than cast iron liners. And the intercooler here is liquid. With all the outward similarity of common components, the M133 and M270 have very few. M133 is a very successful version of a sports engine, which can easily be boosted to over 360-381 HP, and at the same time it has a good resource and reliability for its class. But we must understand that the timing life of 50,000 and turbine life of 50 to 100 for such engines is a good result during combat operation. Few people will be able to drive slowly on the A45, which literally encourages you to step on the gas and listen to the base of the engine. There is no need to treat it as a simple M270, their operating conditions and loads are completely different. Diesel engines are represented by two series, OM651 and OM607, which is essentially a Renault K9K diesel. And officially they were not sold in Russia at all. The number of cars with diesel engines is vanishingly small. The operation of OM607 engines, aka K9K, can be judged mainly by Renault, since there are a lot of them. Look, for example, reviews of Renault Megane. The motor is reliable, although there are some features due to the liners. But diesels of the OM651 series are presented here mainly on heavy equipment and in a volume of 2.2 liters, there are almost no options with a volume of 1.8 liters. And there are completely different operating conditions. In combination with an automatic transmission and on a light car, the reviews about these motors are very good. European users are not aware of the bushing problems, which are the main disadvantage when running such a motor on a heavy sprinter or Viano. 
but the timing resource is relatively low. After 150,000 chains, you need to listen carefully. Unfortunately, there is almost no experience in operating W176 series machines with diesel engines in Russia, so there will be no details. I will only note that the A-class fuel equipment with electromagnetic injectors and blocks of glow plugs do not burn. At this age, the brakes on Mercedes do not fail. They have an excellent resource. The pads on the cars of normal drivers go more than 40,000 kilometers. The discs on the front axle can live up to 200,000. There are simply no complaints about them. Excellent reactive action, excellent ABS. And only for powerful versions, there are a couple of nuances. The base rims for the A180 and A200 are 280 millimeters, but 295 millimeters rims can be ordered for 17 inch wheels. That's not bad, and the same 295 millimeters wheels in the base for the A250 look fine too. But for a 360 horsepower A45, they already look frankly rather weak, especially since the thickness of the discs is only 28 millimeters. As an option on AMG, you can also order 350 millimeters wheels, but they are far from being available on all machines. AMGs are usually driven fast, and the A45 is generally taken not for highways, but for dynamic movement in the city, so it is not surprising that disc warping on AMGs is not uncommon. Their resource is less than 50,000 rather than norm, and the pads on these machines simply burn. In general, take a closer look at what is on the car, and do not count on the fact that it is easy to replace the components of the brake system. The rear brakes here are disc brakes with a screw-type parking brake. AMG has larger and ventilated discs, but there is no fundamental difference. The handbrake drive is electric, with a gear motor mounted directly on the caliper. The drive housing is better than the Volkswagen and its ilk. There are no problems with its cracking, and the prices for non-genuine components are about the same. The ABS unit is very reliable, and the relatively common ESP PRE safe error is usually caused by contamination of the adaptive cruise radar or sensor failures in the blind spot monitoring system. ABS sensor failures are rare and are usually caused by operating errors. The suspension of the W176 is stiff and low in any of the variants. Sometimes the basic suspension is comfortable, sometimes it's sports, which is noticeably more furious, but you can endure this stiffness even on our roads. In principle, the suspension, despite its rigidity, is quite reliable. No wonder there are metal struts of anti-roll bars, now they are often made of plastic and rather large silent blocks. It can walk on good roads for quite a long time. In any case, in Moscow there are cars where the suspension was repaired for the first time with a mileage closer to 200,000, but for Germany this is generally the norm. However, many of our owners already noticed by 50,000 mileage that the rear suspension is working somehow loudly. Troubleshooting usually leads to the replacement of shock absorbers or anthers, which fly off and crack in winter. Sometimes the reason lies in the arches clogged with snow the gap between the wheel and the locker is very small. The front suspension, with the same 50,000 mileage, can fail if only you regularly drive on dead asphalt. Here, first of all, the rear silent blocks of the front lever suffer, the parts are quite expensive. In the original version, this lever has a massive aluminum body of complex shape. Some suppliers offer a replacement in the form of a silent block bushing, but the thickness of the rubber part of such an element is insufficient, which makes the part resource very low. The remaining elements usually live up to a run of 120 to 150,000 kilometers. Approximately at the same run in the front suspension spring sag begins to appear, where of the front silent block of the lever and ball bearing. The ball joint and the front silent block do not regularly change separately, so the wear of any of the elements usually entails the replacement of the front lever assembly. Closer to 200,000, there are often signs that the front wheel bearings and strut bearings need to be replaced. Shock absorbers at such a run are also already decently worn out. Prices for suspension elements for the brand are traditionally high. But for all versions, except for the A45, there is a very wide range of non-original parts, among which there are many products of top suspension brands. 
Like all modern cars, the steering on the W176 is rack and pinion with electric power steering directly on the rail. The rail is quite reliable, but there are two nuances, an unpleasant shaft knock and a small resource of steering tips. Very often, the steering shaft began to knock due to wear on the side bushings. This problem is solved either by tightening or by replacing the bushings with fluoroplastic ones. Well, the resource of steering tips and rods is simply very small. They began to be changed at another 30,000 mileage. First of all, this kind of trouble occurs on cars with low-profile wide tires, which, in general, is expected. The drives and CV joints of a small Mercedes are very reliable, and even tearing the hinge cover is difficult, everything is arranged well. Traditionally, officially internal CV joints are changed only assembled with shafts. Of the new trends, I note the outboard bearing of the intermediate shaft, which is also officially non-replaceable, but at the same time quite small and with a limited resource, there are cases of its failure. Fortunately, the bearing has already been picked up, there is nothing unique about it, and it can be replaced separately from the shaft. The mechanics of the 711.632 series are extremely rare, but there are no complaints about it. The shift mechanism is cable-driven, clutch with a conventional flywheel. There is nothing special to break here, and everything works well. Automatic transmissions on all machines on the MFA platform are variants of the pre-selective robot 7G DCT. This gearbox is Mercedes' own design and, depending on the gear ratio and transmitted torque, it also bears the designation 724.0XX. It is also designated as K7A240 for front-wheel drive versions paired with 1.6-liter engines and as K7X350 for all-wheel drive versions designed for diesel engines and a 2-liter gasoline engine. And the AMG version is called the K7X400. It is easy to see that the numbers mean the maximum transmitted torque in NM and the letter X denotes the all-wheel drive version. Depending on the version of the gearbox, clutch packages differ and the gearbox for AMG also has mechanical differences in the form of a reinforced differential, other shift forks, shafts, and bearings. But in general, this is the same unit with similar operating features. It is relatively young and first appeared on A-Class cars. Therefore, the first copies had a number of childhood diseases manifested in the form of banal gasket leaks and wear of the fork tips to a low resource of the electric oil pump and frequent mechatronics failures due to sensors and solenoids. It is believed that copies before 2014 are relatively raw, but in general, even the earliest boxes, subject to dealer software and design updates, are operated normally. A few words about the design. The robot is based on a mechanical box with conventional clutches and synchronizers, but with two gear rows and an interesting kinematic scheme used in a three-shaft MCP. To increase the dynamic range in lower gears, two links are used. The clutch is in the form of a wet friction clutch in an oil bath, and separate lubrication of the shaft part and hydraulics with clutches is used here. There are two oil pumps, mechanical and electric. The second is needed for the start-stop system to work and to work in sport mode and lunches. The clutch is made in the form of a multi-plate clutch in a common housing, and the clutches are changed only as a set the housing is welded and not collapsible in artisanal conditions. There are two filters in the box internal and external. The internal replacement requires the removal of the mechatronics compartment cover. Cooling is implemented using a heat exchanger on the box, which receives antifreeze from a cold radiator tank using a separate electric pump. The robot widely uses GitRag developments, and many elements are structurally similar to those used in VW DSG boxes. But the drive of the clutch forks is unique in its own way. A direct drive scheme is used here, for which the hydraulic cylinders with the forks are placed in separate units. The main weak point of the design now is the mechatronics unit. It is perfectly repaired, but it was not possible to achieve full fault tolerance. The reason is the same as in the case of other wet preselectives, an increased amount of steel magnetic abrasive in the oil. From the very beginning, the Mercedes box has an external replaceable filter, and the first gear is quite short, 
but still, to maintain smooth shifting, there is slippage and, of course, clutch wear. In addition, a very small heat exchanger is used in the automatic transmission cooling system, which warms up the box from the engine well, but cannot cool it down under frequent and high loads. This is especially noticeable on machines over the age of 5 years, where the heat exchanger is already partially clogged with friction wear products. The only easy way out is to change the oil and filters more often. Replacing the cooling system is extremely difficult. A tuning kit with an adapter for an external radiator costs more than $1,000. Another way is a large-scale collective farming of cooling the box. But the simplest solution in the form of intermediate cooling of the antifreeze supplied to the heat exchanger is not offered at all as a ready-made kit. Leaks in the hydraulic seals of the shift fork blocks are also associated with high operating temperatures. But so far this problem is relevant only for versions of the A45. The second serious problem is the high price of the clutch unit. The block is non-separable, and only a few attempts to restore it with the replacement of friction clutches were successfully completed, usually, when welding, the thin walled body warps. Most likely, this is a solvable problem, but so far the owners are simply buying new parts, since the resource of the clutch block, with good mechatronics, exceeds 200,000 mileage. Mechanical failures are rare. For AMG, this is most often the failure of the synchronizers, and the common malfunction for all is the failure of the bearings and differential. Usually this is a consequence of maintenance errors, they forget to change the oil in the mechanical part of the box. In general, the box is quite reliable, but shifting jerks, especially downshifts, can occur even with software failures in clutch adaptation and oil contamination. And the price of any serious breakdown is very high, even though Mercedes supplies almost all the parts for repairs. So when buying a car, it is highly recommended to carefully check the automatic transmission for errors, especially paying attention to operating temperatures and clutch operation parameters. All-wheel drive vehicles have a cart in and a clutch in the rear axle drive. Non-original will cost three times cheaper. The drive clutch here is of its own design, electrohydraulic, similar to similar Haldux designs. The pump on the Mercedes is electric, the filter is small, and the clutch requires regular fluid updates. Unfortunately, if it is not changed, then it is not a relatively cheap pump that fails, but a clutch unit and even the axis of the differential satellites. Most of the cars with all-wheel drive are very powerful A45 AMG with their specific operating conditions, but on the GLA with weaker motors, wedging of the clutch is common. In the angular gearbox on the automatic transmission, the oil also needs to be changed, although this is not provided for by the regulations. If this is not done, then with runs over 150,000 kilometers it can whistle, and the repair of these nodes is still rare and expensive. Unfortunately, all modern Mercedes require a thorough inspection of the body. The first reason is the banal chips on the arches and the leading edge of the roof. The front arches are not afraid of them, even if there are small chips there, they do not spread Mercedes aluminum paints well. But on the rear arches, the chips peel off and spread. Often this happens without visible rust, but simply due to the oxidation of the top layer of zinc. Experienced owners often seal the edge with foil. Chips on the leading edge of the roof are also an unpleasant thing, and they occur on cars that spend a lot of time on the track. Even at a very childish, by automotive standards, age W176, it makes sense to look for damage to the paintwork on the flat parts of the panels. In addition to traces of small and not very accidents, there are chances to find ordinary bugs and traces of their elimination. Sadly, the Mercedes galvanized layer is either thin or very uneven. However, there is definitely zinc. When the paintwork peels off in places of chips, the steel acquires a characteristic gray matte shade and can resist corrosion for a long time. Simple bubbles on the paintwork on cars from Moscow occasionally come across, and they come across even on very fresh cars with runs up to 100,000 kilometers. The most characteristic location of such bubbles is on the roof, side surfaces, and on the back door. But especially unpleasant places are the rolling of door panels. 
There, the damage area is maximum, and seems with a thin layer of sealant pass nearby. The roof really does not like resins from trees and the sun, though the paintwork quickly becomes dull and covered with a fine patina. Side surfaces suffer more from stones flying from under the wheels. The reason here is that there are usually no mud guards in front, and often very wide tires direct all the stones up, since the shape of the threshold allows this. By the way, you also need to pay attention to the thresholds, they are low, they are often damaged by curbs. Traces of such contacts are kept by a plastic lining, and if it is deformed, damage to the paintwork will be noticeable at the points of contact with the body at the rear arch and at the very threshold lining. At the same time, you will almost certainly not find other problems with the W176. Unless, of course, the car was in a serious accident. Almost the entire bottom of this Mercedes is covered with aerodynamic panels, so even on the lift you won't see anything at all. True, it will be possible to better examine the thresholds, although this will also have to try. You need to try to look under the plastic lining from below and see the threshold stiffening rib. It often has chips and even outright rust because the car is extremely low and dirt accumulates in the plastic lining. Even on the lift, the area around the rear suspension will be visible. There is no major damage there, but pitting marks of corrosion are often clearly visible. If you remove the plastic shields or arm yourself with an endoscope, you can also see the area around the rear suspension and tank. There will almost certainly be visible signs of corrosion on the plastic mounting studs. So pay attention to its condition, often it is all broken after the first winter. If it is possible to remove the lockers, then be sure to look into the arches. So far, no serious troubles should be expected here, there are no serious mud niches here. But soil sometimes accumulates in the front arches behind the locker, and in the rear there are areas of increased pollution. Severe corrosion is a rarity, but still occasionally come across cars with frankly rusty arches and bottom. The lockers are felt on the back, and even on fresh cars they retain moisture for a long time. Usually these are cars from Moscow or St. Petersburg, which, apparently, had far from the best operating conditions. But even in this case, it will take another 10 years before serious rust with perforation and violation of the tightness of the seams, although this is painful and insulting for a new and extremely expensive car. And what hurts even more, even if you show this rust to the owner, you will not wait for discounts, but simply get a chance to abandon the unsuccessful copy and look for a garage storage car. The W176 does not have any complex hydraulics and pneumatics, and body position sensors are generally not sensitive to moisture and dirt. There is nothing special to inspect from the inside, only if for the purpose of checking for an accident. There are no signs of corrosion under the hood, moisture rarely occurs in the trunk. Wet floors are even rarer, and this is dangerous mainly not for the body, but for electronics. There is nothing unusual in the A-Class, headlights with delicate fasteners quickly sandblast, the front panel loses its shape even with not very strong blows, the windshield is very weak and cracks and chips easily. The bumpers are good, but the original parking sensors have a very delicate sensor frame and easily fail. The button for opening the rear door often breaks, and the rear wiper is filled with water during washing the seal is weak, and over time the wiper wedges. Let me remind you again, due to the fact that the car is low, it constantly receives damage to the lower part of the front bumper and anthers under it. And with separate branches or stones, it can reach both the washer pump and the tubes, which are also low. Thresholds and bottom panels also suffer from low ground clearance. The filler neck of the gas tank is a bit of a hassle. Here the lock sometimes fails, and the tank ventilation is clogged in all cars before restyling and even in cars up to about 2016. The reason lies in the unsuccessful at Sorber. It was modernized, but there was no recall campaign. You will not believe it, but often it is sawn, cleaned, and soldered back. What to do? A cheap Mercedes is not a car that is not saved on maintenance. There are surprisingly few questions about keyless entry, door handles, locks, and power windows. Apparently, all this has the reliability that befits the brand. Let the owners of the A-Class not beat me, 
but the interior here, although cozy, is cheap. By brand standards, of course. The W176 has a lot of hard plastic, the central tunnel upsets with a rough texture, the skin is also very rough and by no means natural even in expensive versions, except that they work better with materials on the A45. But everything looks great, and the ergonomics are at least good. True, I myself, for a thousand odd kilometers behind the wheel of a car, could not fully get used to it. And the point here is not in the automatic transmission lever, it is just very convenient, but in visibility, especially back and right and back. In addition, the rear is not only cramped, but also poor, there is more hard plastic than the front, and the cheapest trim levels can even have manual power windows here. From the taste I will note a very youthful style, and the dashing tablet, which has become a characteristic feature of Mercedes 10 years ago, looks a bit clumsy. But the metalization is good, and all the buttons and levers are perfectly aligned in terms of tactile sensations. And they are also pleased with an excellent dashboard, an ideal climate, very good steering wheel and seats. For cars with a mileage of 150,000 kilometers, interior wear is noticeable mainly on leather seats and a little on worn tinsel on the steering wheel. In most cases, high quality dry cleaning solves problems of this kind almost completely. In cars with a fabric interior, wear is generally extremely difficult to recognize, and often with an ideal interior, you can see strangely worn sills and side windows. At the same time, breakdowns of latches, handle locks and other small things are a rarity. The climate of this Mercedes is extremely successful and powerful. And what is nice, even if the first owner saved money and did not install an automatic thermotronic, then you can install the option without replacing the stove unit. Only the control unit, harness and sensors will need to be replaced. True, the climate will in fact be single zone, but in such a small cabin, real two zone is still not achieved. What are the downsides? First, the limited resource of the fan. But removing the motor and lubricating the bearings is not very difficult. At the same time, it is worth cleaning the impeller, on which dirt intensively settles, which makes it unbalanced. But the regulator transistor located directly on the motor motor fails extremely rarely. Secondly, the air conditioner evaporator often starts to smell of moisture and swamp. Here you have to often change and sometimes clean the system. The most common problem is poor interior heating in winter. But I note that it is not connected with the work of the climate control, but with the poor warming up of the M270 series engines in the winter and the peculiarities of the operation of its cooling system. The electrics work so stably that the main problems that concern the owners are the firmware of the AMG menu, turning off the eco mode, which is set by default, and battery life. The latter is largely due to the eco mode and the operation of the start-stop function. Moreover, it works with a delay and harsh vibration, which is not very comfortable. For cars of the first years of production, difficulties begin due to the wear of an additional battery, which is at the passenger's feet. It is very important to protect onboard electronics from water. Filled SAM blocks, of which there are traditionally two, can be very expensive. Yes, and water in the ECU connector and in the engine compartment wiring harness under the battery or brake cylinder can lead to malfunctions of the onboard electronics and even to failure of the unit. Dealers change the harnesses, but for some reason, short-circuiting and flooded ECUs are still occasionally, but come across. The chances of encountering this kind of problem are slim, but they are there. 